The primary data structure in NumPy is the n-dimensional array, so that's going to be the focus of this course. But before we start using arrays, let's motivate their existence. Suppose you have a lot of data, like the price of a stock measured every second for a year. That's about 32 million values. To represent this data in native Python, the most obvious data structure we could use is a list. Let's give that a go using arbitrary made up stock prices. Okay, we'll say prices equals empty list, n equals 60 seconds times 60 minutes times 24 hours times 365 days, and for i and range n, prices.append 100 plus i divided by 100. And then we'll go ahead and print the first five prices. OK, now let's go ahead and calculate the average stock price. So to do that, we could say average equals 0, 0.0 for p and prices, average plus equals p divided by len prices, and then we'll go ahead and print the average. All right, and hopefully you notice that populating our list of prices took a few seconds, and so did calculating the average price. Now, it wasn't agonizingly slow, but it would be if we had to do the same thing for hundreds of stocks. Now let's see how you could do the same sort of thing in NumPy. So here I'll import NumPy as in P, and then I'll say prices equals 100 plus np dot a range in divided by 100, We'll go ahead and print the first five prices just like before. And then I can calculate the average as np.mean prices and print the average. Pretty easy and fast, right? The takeaway here is that NumPy arrays are fast, and that's the main reason they exist. All the convenient math functions, random number generators, and other things provided by the NumPy package are great but secondary to the main benefit, the speed of the NumPy array data structure. So why are arrays faster than lists? And if that's true, why do lists even exist? First, you need to understand that NumPy arrays are intended to store objects with the same size and type. That's because arrays store data in contiguous, fixed size memory blocks. For example, an array of 32-bit integers like 301 would internally be stored in binary like this. If you wanted to access the third element in the array, you can essentially say, hey computer, give me the third element of this array. And then your computer starts at the beginning of the array and knows exactly how many bits to jump across to get to the third element. In this case, 64 bits. Knowing exactly how many bits to jump across to get to some requested element is what makes arrays fast for data access. Unlike integers, strings are objects that vary in size. For example, consider the strings, hello, I am a banana. The string hello is 40 bits, I is 8 bits, am is 16 bits, a is 8 bits, and banana is 48 bits. So unless we agree on a maximum possible string size, we can't easily represent these strings with contiguous fixed size memory blocks because the strings are different sizes. And if you just store them in contiguous memory blocks like this, as soon as you start asking your computer to fetch a specific element, you'll run into problems because your computer doesn't know how far to jump from the beginning of the array to get to some requested element. Not to mention a host of other problems like what happens if we try to swap two elements with different sizes. To get around this complexity, we could store the strings in some random location in memory and then build an array of fixed size pointers to the strings. Now, a pointer is just an integer that identifies some location in your computer's memory, i.e. a memory address. So now if we want to fetch, say, the third element, assuming our pointers are 32-bit integers, just like before, we can quickly jump across 64 bits to get to the third pointer and then make that one extra step to go retrieve our desired string element. The benefit to this architecture is that pointers can point to anything, so we could actually store a combination of strings, integers, and other objects all together. The downside is that you have to make that one extra step each time you want to fetch an element, plus the lack of a guarantee that all your data is the same type 
can cause bugs. For example, if you try to sum the elements and one of them turns out to be a string. This architecture I'm describing is one implementation of a list. So to recap, NumPy arrays are faster than lists, and that's why we like them. But that speed comes at the cost of being flexible. Specifically, if we have a NumPy array, each element of the array should be of the same type. That means we can have an array of ints, an array of floats, or an array of booleans, but not an array of ints, floats, and booleans together.